Uh, hello, I'm Max Rushton. Welcome to a brand new podcast from Sky Sports. Uh, we're live on, uh, we're on the Sky Sports website there. We're live on Facebook <laughs> there. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, you'll know we're on iTunes because you're listening to us. Uh, the working title, uh, this is Harry, by the way. I'll introduce you properly <laughs> in a minute, Harry. Uh, the working title for this is uh, Sky Sports Premier League Predictions Podcast, Man of the People <laughs> versus Head of Data. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a Premier League predictions podcast using statistics. Yes. And that's where you come in. It is. Uh, but not in a boring way that people use <laughs> that's statistics. That's where you come in. That's where I come in. Thanks, <laughs> Harry. Um, uh, right. Representing the people is me, Max <laughs> Rushton, host of the increasingly popular fantasy football club. This is what it says here. And what I like to call the soccer and glory years of 2008 to 15, although I don't have any stats uh, to back that up. Uh, my adversary for this pod is uh, head of data, Harry Carr. Hello, Harry Carr. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well. Is your actual title Head of Data? Head of Sky Data. So actually, that's something I do for Sky News. Right. Uh, you might have seen me this morning talking about the NHS. This is I much more did. interesting. Yeah, OK. How is the NHS? The NHS is not doing as well as one might hope. OK. In danger of relegation. <laughs> In danger of relegation, okay. definitely. See, that's fine. Slipping down the leaderboard. Hopefully, the NHS will get some parachute payments uh, if it does go <laughs> down. Uh, I've got some questions so people can get to know you. Yep. All right, and you know, work out if you are worthy of head of data as your title. I worry. Full name? Harry. Harry David Carr. Okay, age? Uh, 26. Weight? Uh, about 13 stone. Okay. Um, I'm about 14. Mm -hmm. and I think yeah, we're about nine the same height. Kilos right. Overweight. <laughs> A football team? Uh, Newcastle United. Okay. Uh, GC I apologise. GCSE results? Uh, A stars, obvious. All the way? <laughs> no, I got four A's actually, I let it side down. But I got an A level early at the same time, so okay. it counts. Okay, so, so you are a brain box. You know, uh, you're uh, justifiably <laughs> in your role as head of data. I think so, although okay. man of the people, Oxford grad, I feel there's a bit of question what, I, don't there. what, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> are, are you the son of Stato from the original, original fantasy football? I'm that not. you're probably too young to I'm remember. I'm not, that was before my time really. Okay, and do you have any other accomplishments that will impress the viewers on the, the website, the Facebook, or, or uh, listening on the podcast, that will impress them into why they should trust you as head of data? Uh, I recently correctly tipped Benoit Hamon to become the Socialist Party candidate in France. So there you go. <laughs> there is a relevant... Uh... <laughs> OK, and I'm, I'm a sceptic, OK? Yeah. I, you're the sort of pro-zone Sam Allardyce, yeah. and I'm the Harry Redknapp, watch the game, <laughs> go on a hunch type thing. Yeah, okay. that seems um, fair. Now what we'd like from you on Facebook is uh, any questions about anything ideally football based but that uh, involves statistics because we have a head of data here. Uh, be creative but ask us anything. Uh, once I've worked out how to use uh, <laughs> my phone and get the video up, we'll get your questions uh, and read your comments straight away. We've had a lot of comments already. This oh, is that's very exciting. exciting. Uh, uh, let me just turn the volume hear down. ourselves, I know. Uh, that's fine. This is all part <laughs> of it. Um, thank you, Danny O'Connor, who said something about Arsene Wenger that we can't read out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, keep those coming. We'll ask your questions as they come in. Um, uh, it, it, how are you with insults, by the I'm way? Okay, I'm OK. okay I'm OK. I've tried to Sky News and do political polling, so there's plenty of fire okay. comes my way. Uh, OK, Nicola says, how does Giroud's goal per minute this season stack up with some of the other strikers? Uh, not terribly well, oh, to really? be honest. Um, he's, you know... He's not as bad as he would be because he's off the bench quite a lot. He seems mm. he seems to have been all right, but he's not not tip top. He's you know he's a good striker. He's not a world class striker, and they kind of fill in the stats with that. Okay, interesting. I just threw that straight at you. We haven't prepped that, and you knew it already. Okay, well look, what we're going to do for the rest of the season is this: we'll predict the games in the Premier League. All right. I will be armed with just my own thoughts, which is not a great deal. <laughs> you have your enormous brain and the entire Sky Sports stats department in your armoury, OK? Absolutely. And it'll be three points if you get an exact score, yeah. two points if you get the result right, win, lose or draw, and naught points if you are wrong. Yeah. OK. Uh, before that, uh, we're going to look at the whole season, right? We're going to look at the end of the season. You have compiled the Premier League as it will finish using what? So this looks, it basically uses a ranking uh, set used by chess players okay. originally. Right. Um, we've uh, basically adjusted that to work with football. The, the original chess thing didn't really cope with draws, so we've had to deal with that. Okay. Um, it takes into account home advantage, shots ratios, uh, the actual goal margins, uh, and the strength of the schedule kind of going forwards. Right, okay. And then basically it runs through a thing called a Monte Carlo simulation, uh, and we work out what the percentage likelihood is that okay. each team will fit, finish in each position and the amount of points they're likely to get. 
and will you be putting your mortgage on these exactly <laughs> tables? Is exactly how it's going to finish? Uh, no. So the whole point of it is we put probabilities okay. of how likely it is that each time it's going to win or lose. So, for example, we've got Chelsea at the top for mm -hmm. now. Yeah. We have 91 percent chance of winning the league. We think that nine times out of ten from this position, right, it, the Ch Chelsea will go on to win it. Okay, um, I've got Chelsea top as well. Yeah. What do, you say? Um, do you want to know my uh, top six? Uh, you go for your top six. I've gone Chelsea, Spurs, going with my heart there because I think Man City will overtake them. Chelsea, Spurs, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United. Are you a, my City, top six. You a City I'm a Spurs, fan? A Spurs I'm a Cambridge fan. fan, but Spurs are my big team who win things. Okay. Please insult me on Facebook. <laughs> people don't like that. So I think mine's similar. I didn't quite catch all of those. So mine's so we've got 91% Chelsea to win. Okay. And then the second one is 5% on Spurs again. So oh, really? Spurs are okay. second for us. Okay. They rec they have 87% chance of getting to the top four, which mm -hmm. is pretty good. Pretty good for Spurs. Mm -hmm. um, 2% chance Man City and 1% chance Arsenal and fourth. So we actually have Man United and Liverpool missing out on the top four. Really? But it's really close, to be fair. So we think there's 87% chance the Spurs will win it. Chelsea are pretty much guaranteed. Two-thirds chance Man City, about 60% Arsenal, 41% Man United, and 36% Nelson Machado says, never will Man United remain in sixth position. <laughs> what do you say to Nelson? Uh, well, I'd say that it's not impossible that they will uh, end up in sixth. And actually, we have them in fifth there. Um, but actually, I, I actually have a bet on with Faisal Islam, our political editor, that that right. they'll finish ahead. That this was back when we showed Liverpool finishing ahead of United quite comfortably a couple of weeks back. So it's not gone terribly well for Klopp since, no, it hasn't. Uh, and not well for the predictor actually for the, for those two games. I don't think anyone would have predicted Liverpool losing last week. So. Nelson has not given us any information as to why we should trust him either. No. So you know, if you give it out, you've got to <laughs> just send us your CV if you would, Nelson. Now Colin Spears writes, "Where will Everton finish?" And this can take us on to the rest of the yeah. top of the table. So that is hard. You know, it is tough. that is hard to predict. I'm going to say it's hard for you, yeah, but I haven't yeah. even bothered. Uh, but what <laughs> happens sort of 7th to 13th, which is essentially the same position? So basically Everton are quite clearly the best of the rest, okay. as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so they even have a 10%. They're, they're as likely to get into the top four as Chelsea are to lose the title, in oh, our okay. opinion. So we, Everton are definitely the kind of one knocking on the door mm -hmm. to try and get into that top six, to get into that top six. The rest are kind of much of a muchness. So they have the West Broms, the West Hams, even Burnley, yeah. we reckon are very safe. Okay. Um, and much so, more so than if you look at kind of the, the bookies or whatever. Uh, my tip would be Burnley are overrated to for relegation and were through quite a lot of this season uh, compared with what it's always signed, looked like in our model. Um, and then you kind of get down then to the bottom half. So if you look at relegation candidates, uh, we have Palace are nailed, not, not nailed on, but 70%. To I've go got down. Palace, Middlesbrough, Sunderland. So we've got Palace, Sunderland, Hull. I've got really? in there. You reckon the silver's going to going to turn it round? Uh, well, I just looked at the table today. I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not based this on anything, and I just thought I didn't see how low Middlesbrough were, yeah. and no one's talked about them for a while. And so that yeah. and people have talked about Hull. They've had a little bounce in Marco Silva. Ask me in two weeks, I'll change my mind. But right now, that's you reckon team. that's it. I like so again, if you look at the bookies, Palace for a long time. I don't know what they're they're looking like now. But because of the Sam Allardyce effect, there was a big sort of assumption that he would turn it round in exactly the way that he did, to be fair, with Sunderland. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that, and it, has done previously. Is that an example of, of where people, you know, just immediately, just everyone's hunch, every ex pro, mm. a load of journalists all went, Big Sam will come in yeah. and therefore they'll, su they'll survive. So nobody did any actual work, no one did any research, <laughs> no one looked at anything, they just went, Oh, Big Sam's good at yeah. this. Yeah, I think so. And, and, to be fair, he has got a really good track record. Mm. He is one of those managers where usually changing managers doesn't really make that much of a difference at all. Um, so actually, if you take people, uh, teams which have kind of gone below their the average kind of point you'd expect them to get, if you take the, the ones who change their manager and the ones that don't, then actually you see a similar kind of bounce, which is that you regress to the mean. You okay. essentially go back to the amount, the average results. You've basically been unlucky usually this is if the you're first, going further down. Uh, football podcast that has used the phrase regress, regress to the, the mean. <laughs> I just like to point out. Uh, Apologise. Uh, um, all the better for it. You can see, and you can see that with the likes of so West Ham. There was lots of talk of uh, them getting rid of Slavon Bilic, mm -hmm. um, but he's, they've now bounced right back up. Crystal Palace did change their manager, has gone down, but also you get sometimes it does work out. Hull City, for example, have changed their manager mm. and it has, things have gone through, but that doesn't necessarily yet. 
it might be that Silva is very, very good and he will prove that over several seasons. You cannot judge a manager by a handful of games, otherwise Tim Sherwood would be uh, the next England manager. Annex says, will Steve Mandanda <laughs> play again and save Palace from relegation? <laughs> uh, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe. he's. Uh, I don't think Wayne Hennessy is too bad, is he? <laughs> they're, both, they're both very good keepers. OK, so that's the top. You've done the bottom of the league. Who, who's going down? So we've got Palace, Sunderland mm -hmm. um, and Hull, although actually the ones just above them. So uh, Swansea, Leicester and Borough uh, are given fairly good shouts, so about a third each of going down. Uh, I think uh, Leicester is obviously the big story there. The, the, it was up until recently they looked relatively safe. We were giving them kind of 10-ish percent okay. chance, of, chance of relegation, but they, they've been really hammered hard the last couple of matches. Like when you lose badly, yeah. you get punished in that our affects predictor. your percentages does it? so yeah if you lose three by three goals you lose more points than if you lost by one goal or whatever oh, okay. especially at home um, and yeah basically they are not looking safe at all uh, which would be a real story if they get relegated after winning the title Barry it's says possible. De Gea should stay, which uh, is you know totally relevant to what we were just discussing. <laughs> I don't disagree if you're a Man United <laughs> fan. No, I think you're right. Um, OK, well, look, that's the end for the website. Uh, if you've watched this and uh, enjoyed it or you have nothing better to do, uh, you can either look back on Facebook and watch the rest of our predictions live or listen to the podcast. Uh, but thank you for watching this bit.